please pray for my friend, Corrine Walker, who just came through brain surgery. She's fighting for her life and needs your prayers. Thank you. Come as you are, and we're going to get you fixed, baby. Like, you don't wait and come to Jesus when you get it all together. you got to come get, to, get into the power of God so he can help you get it together because we're all flawed. We're all flawed, and the enemy knows because he is such a hashtag punk that he knows that you are the one in your family that can take a licking and keep on ticking. You're the one in your family that everybody called a black sheep. And you like, oh, oh, no, I walked up into Vibrant Church on first Wednesday. <laughs> Y'all were sleeping on me. I hope you got your rest. Because I'm back. Because all we need is an awakening. It's like when we finally get a clue. We finally Sit there one day. You've been waiting for God to be a genie in a bottle. You've been stalking your ex on Instagram and Facebook. Because he walked out on you. Now you done got your whole body snatched. You're like, what? Well, he done moved on. And you're over here breaking your heart every single day of your life because the enemy knows that there is still a connection in that situation. So what does the enemy do? The enemy cannot take you out, so he's trying to wear you out. So he gets on social media and allows your heart to be tied to people that should not be in your life in the first place because nobody that walked out of your life is a part of your destiny. So you scrolling, you scrolling. You scrolling, you scrolling on Instagram, you getting all your word on Instagram, and you getting all your, you like, like it, girl, like. Whatever mood you in, that's whose page you following, because she dropping it like it hot, uh-huh. Get them, girl. And people saying what you want to say so you can share all their stuff, and it don't look like you said it, but you meant it, and it's subliminal messages. And you start scrolling on social media, and the enemy is such a punk, and he knows he can't take you out, so he's trying to wear your tail out. So he makes sure that that broad that's the same age as you shows up in your news feed every single day, and you want her life. You start looking at her life. You lay in your bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you done scrolling through every single because he left, he left you for her, so she must be... Bad man, Jamma. <laughs> and you scrolling, you back 45 weeks looking at all her pictures. And you accidentally hit that hard. <laughs> You're like, ah! Because <laughs> now you are all hashtag stalker status. <laughs> and now you're stuck like Chuck. Because the enemy has got you thinking, she done wrote three books, she's the same age as you, you were in special ed, you still don't know where commas go. And now you mad because she written three books. You never got your hooked on phonics, but you know there's a book inside of you. <laughs> she can write three books, but I can't even write one. <laughs> she got a boy and a girl and a boy and a girl, and I can't even have but five girls trying to have a boy. <laughs> and this is because, you know, we document everything on Insta stories. She got her baby laying in that papoose. <laughs> She's sitting there greening and juicing these greens, and you just sitting there staring at her and getting madder and madder. Like, God, where are you at? And she's sitting there making these green juices, and your kid is running around the house with chicken McNuggets hanging out of his mouth. And you're like, <laughs> and she's sitting there looking with her long, gorgeous hair and same age as you, and you look a little worn because you done ran a few men off with your mouth too. You're like, girl, listen, Linda, listen. You done told your husband in 17 years, I don't need no man. You woke up one day and didn't have one. <laughs> You're like, what happened? He said, you don't need no man. <laughs> then you gonna have the audacity to get mad at God for that. And God's over here saying, no, rejection was a release. You might have in your brokenness said some things, but anybody that walks out of your life in your broken state wasn't supposed to be a part of your destiny anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
Let it go. Let it go. You ain't got to take that crap anymore. Let it go. Let it go. See, you got to get to a place. You're scrolling, 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 scrolling. And she's juicing these, juicing these greens. And, and you won't even, you ain't got a juicer. It's too much work to clean that thing. <laughs> and then lo and behold, the enemy will make sure that you all of a sudden see her picture. And Destin, she just had twins. She already snatched in a bikini. And I think you done pushed up that picture to get real close. She ain't got no stretch marks. You done looking, baby. You done, you dissected that. You ain't been in your word at all, but you dissecting this picture and you're blowing it, blowing it, blowing. You can't get it up close enough to you take a screenshot out of it so you can go to your picture. Y'all hitting each other. You know why? Because you're doing it. And you realize, oh my God, she ain't even got no stretch marks. She already snatched, she already in a bikini. And she just had that baby two weeks ago. And I'm still trying to get my back boobs off from little Johnny that's 12. <laughs> so what happens? Then the last straw. See, y'all mad because people sucking the life out of you, but you giving them the straw, baby. You're like... <laughs> You're over here saying, oh my gosh, like she got everything going for her. And the last straw, the enemy's like, oh, I'm about to get you. <laughs> you see her husband. She's got the boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. She snatched. And now she shows her husband. And her husband looks like he stepped out of GQ. And yours looks like he stepped out of DQ. <laughs> You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. So the enemy knows that whatever it is on the inside of you that you've never fixed is the very area that he's going to go after. And whenever you finally start realizing it ain't nothing but a season and not a sentence, when you start realizing that it ain't no monument in my life, it is a moment. This is part of my life story. This right here, God knew before I was ever even a thought in my mother's womb that I was going to run five men off with my mouth, and he knew number six was it. But see, what we do is we go through life so bitter and so mad. We're Petty Crocker, Petty Patrick, Bitter Betty, and we're walking around, we're spewing and bleeding on people that didn't cut us. Because it sucks to be broken. And so often what ends up happening is we end up getting into a place where we, we actually get comfortably broken. We actually get to a place where we walk around every day with a scowl on our face, and the only thing that it happens whenever you allow bitterness and anger and unforgiveness to live in your life, it's like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Yeah. And basically what you're doing while you're scrolling and you're wishing you had it, instead of just saying, baby, you can have him, the trash took itself out. <laughs> Instead of just getting up and realizing rejection was not necessarily someone wanting out of your life, but it was somebody God needed out of your future. And even if you did it, it was not a part of your destiny. What is in your life right now is where God is saying, at this moment, at this moment, at this moment, I'm waiting for you to take back your power. Take back your power. Let them talk. You're like, but you don't understand. They talking about me. Haters are confused fans. Why in the world do we care about people that sit around the table and talk about you? Why? And then you've got all these people that come to you and say, well, so-and-so was talk talking about you. Well, I want to know why they felt comfortable talking to you. Why? Because the enemy uses anything that's going to distract you from getting ahead in your life. It takes one second for you to make up in your mind, I'm done with this, I'm closing this door, I ain't mad at the doors that closed on me another day in my life. Baby, close the doors, I'm going to praise him in the hallway, and when I come back, my comeback game is so strong, what? I'm going to buy the whole doggone building. My sermon title is Moving in the mess. Moving 
not paralyzed. It happened. It's over. Some of y'all been going, look, in fact, tell yourself this right now. Say, girl. Say, bro. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. However, how you talk to yourself. Some of y'all ain't talking to yourself. That's the problem. <laughs> y'all need to learn to get in that mirror and be your whole biggest cheerleader. You know when you're being nasty. You know you've been on social media. In fact, y'all, you see, we got the queen and the kings of people that get on social media. Well, I went to Vibrant Church. Real talk, Kim. Told me that I could take a lick and keep on taking. <laughs> and she said, I didn't have to listen to no more drama mamas. So if you don't see me in your news feed, you've been deleted. Because <laughs> I'm sick of the drama. You are the drama. Because <laughs> you don't have to say nothing when you ain't the drama. See, when you're whole, you're walking in your own lane. Yeah. When you're whole, you could be walking through a divorce and people talking about you, and they're like, girl, I don't know how in the world she's holding it together. She's holding it together because with new levels, new devils, and you realize I have understood one thing in my life. Whatever is behind me is not walking into my future, and I only get one chance in this life. I ain't staying stuck for nobody. <laughs> Moving in your mess. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, forget the former things. Why do you think the enemy uses our minds the worst? We get a bump in our boob and we're like, ah, I'm dying. I had this lady in my church who wanted to die so bad she couldn't handle it. <laughs> she would come up in my church, Pastor Kim, I need you to pray for me. I said, what's going on? She said, I got cancer. I said, who said? She goes, I just feel it. My mother died of it. My aunt died of it. Everybody going to die of it because, you know, generational curse. I, said, I just need you to lay hands on me. I said, okay, I'm going to lay hands on you, but you don't ever talk about it again because you ain't dying. Because life and death are the power of your words, and by his stripes you are healed. So I lay hands on Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. She's healed because I'm just real dramatic anyway. <laughs> that next service, she comes walking in with the, with the rocker, with the walker. I thought, dear God. She said, Pastor Kim, I need you to pray for me. I said, did you get your report? No, not yet. It's, it's in two weeks. I said, oh, but you're dying. Are you weak? No. No. I just feel a little light-headed, a little breathing going on up in here. I said, but you've never been to the doctor yet. No. No. I need you to pray for me. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. And inside, I'm thinking, heal her or kill her. Like, why do you want to get y'all? I remember, you know, you can tell you why I'm real talk here. Because <laughs> I am the queen of walking this stuff out <laughs> before I talk to you. <laughs> Everything I ever preach on, I've done. I'll never forget y'all, even up to two years ago. I am, I, I am, I am praying for people, laying hands on people. Pastor, just shut up, 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 up. And in my head, for some reason, I'm thinking, oh, the devil would love to take me out. <laughs> you know, because I'm winning so many people to Jesus. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I realize that I'm, 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 I'm saying these things, but yet I'm starting to fear because all of a sudden, I'm like, he'd love to take me out. Well, I'm looking for him to take me out. I just got done laying hands on everybody on the road. On the road again. I walk in the house. All of a sudden, I start feeling just tingling in my arm. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. I go Google it. Don't you ever Google Google will have you dead in two seconds. <laughs> You'll be like, what is that clog pour on the pit of my neck? And it's like, girl, you're having a whole stroke. You're going to die in five minutes. It's a clog pour. <laughs> and you're like, oh, dear Jesus. I said, oh, my God. I'm, I'm, oh. It said your, your left arm's going to start tingling. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I'm laying in that bed. I'm like, because I am. I ain't nothing for me to go, come out. I will lay hands on myself. I was walking around the house. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I was like, oh, dear Lord. I said, Mama, I said, you got to take me to the hospital. She said, for what? I said, I'm dying. She said, how? I said, Google said in five minutes I'm going to be dead because it is a stroke. She said, Kimberly, real talk, Kim, because that's what everybody does. Throws it in my face. You better go lay hands on yourself and get your mind together. I said, if you don't take me to the hospital, I'm going to take myself. 
She jumps in that car. She runs every light trying to get to that hospital because by now she's like, girl, there's something wrong with Kim because I don't fall apart. I just don't fall apart. I just am one of those that's like, it ain't going to take me out. You can't steal my birthday. But this time I was dying, and I knew I was dying. And I would get to the hospital, and we pull into the hospital. I don't even let her, I don't even let her park. I just literally jump out of the car rolling. As it's rolling, I go and proceed to fall over the front desk. of And, oh, social media will have people knowing who you are and stuff. And I didn't even care. I just fell over the front. And then she goes, ma'am, what's your name? I said, Dad, Dad. She goes, ma'am, what's your social security? Dad. I realized that bra was not moving. So I proceeded to fall over and just die. <laughs> I heard God say, what are you doing? I said, Elizabeth, I'm coming home. <laughs> I heard God say, girl, you ain't dying, but you're going to be about $10,000 broke because you couldn't get your mind under control you ain't dying and if you die you ain't gonna know you died <laughs> I literally felt this miracle come in my body I heard ten thousand dollars <laughs> I get it. I get your mind playing all these games on you and layers upon layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of carrying stuff that you swear you let go of. You've been going to that same therapist for 10 years talking about Jerry. <laughs> How does that make you feel? You're like, girl, I don't know, but I'm a single mama, and that was, that was a whole two-week salary. I'm going to need you to tell me how it made me feel. And God's over here saying, I have given you the power to break off of you every worry, every fear, every sickness, every crazy talk you're talking to yourself, every time your ex is telling you stuff. Blah, 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 blah. You, you, you already married again, and you still remember what he said about you. And now you wait till your husband gets in the bed at night and you all of a sudden, your poor husband ain't done nothing to you. It was the ex. But because you never healed, you wait till he goes to sleep and then you slide out of your bed. You slide, 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 and you slither on the floor over to his side of the bed to the coffee table and you start to grab his phone to see who he's talking to. <laughs> you forget now we have smartphones and the minute anything moves, that light comes on. Why don't you just heal? Why don't we just get to a place where we realize if this is every single day of my life for the last 50 years, the last 20 years, the last 12 years, I've never felt loved, I've never felt worthy, I've never heard God's voice, I've never, I've never, I've never, I can't stay on the platform. I have done this, I've done that. I can't do this, I can't do that. I'm not worthy enough and God is of your saying, you are the very one that I wanna use. Because there is nothing like going to hell to come out on fire. Y'all, look at Jonah. I can tell you a million stories. Look at Jonah. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. Just like he's telling some of y'all, pray for your enemies. You're like, I'd rather die. <laughs> pray for your ex-husband. I'd rather die. You're laying in bed every night. Kill him! <laughs> and you're even praying specifics. Kill him with a train! Because you know if a train hits him, Pastor Delgado can't even lay his on and bring him back. He'll splat. And you're over here, just like Jonah. Go to Nineveh. He's all, no, man, I want all of them to burn in the lake of fire. I ain't going to Nineveh. Boom, shaka, like a boom. And he went wherever he wanted to go. But see, God will always get your number. You can run, but you can't hide. And every single person that's sitting in this seat, in this, in this auditorium tonight, it was a divine appointment that you walk in here so I could say, wake up, it's time. Like, it's time for you to get your butt in gear. It is time for you to let go. It is time for you to block their number. It is time for you to erase some voice messages. It is time for you to stop crying over the same thing. Get up because nothing that is behind you is greater than what's in front of you. And Ephesians 3.20 said he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ever ask or think. He said in Jeremiah 29.11, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future and hope.
What are you waiting on?